Hair's good. And what about those days where you're, you know, you're tired, the wife's... Don't hit the snooze button because you'll be late to class. Late. <laughs> Tony. Jeff, Jeff, what's up? What you got there? Got the secret? You gonna pop on the, uh, the test on, too? Uh, <laughs> maybe. With this, it should be illegal, right? Yeah, it should be. You saw it'll catch you. Got the name Marcus over there. Don't let me put you. Marcus, you going on the vlog, brother? Huh? I said you going on the vlog. How to beat up a Yeah. So me and Jeff are about to do some drills from the butterfly guard just to warm up. From the overhook, the over tie, and the butterfly guard. You might see this when your partner goes for like a body lock pass or just digs the underhook on you. So the hook sweep is one of the most basic moves. You guys got to have that down. It's just like you know foundational movement. So here, hook sweep. One thing that really catches a lot of people is that you need a little like initial bump to get underneath your partner to wedge yourself and that helps you get them over keep your hook strong and the bottom leg is used to post off the mat from here me and jeff started to do a little bit of positional sparring just to see you know if the guy tries to sprawl out and i'm trying to get like to a scissor sweep from the butterfly guard i'm also trying to look for underhook and also like a shoulder clamp so this is a good way to learn different moves is just a little bit of resistance so you can see like what your options are because if you're always training too hard you won't have time to think but if you slow it down a little bit you're gonna have time to just see your options here i try to elevate and just able able to post and maybe you're probably gonna try to roll out of this with like a re-roll but it's good to see the options beforehand so you won't be surprised when you're training you know Look at all your options and then move from there. And I think uh, time's about to be up in a little bit. <laughs> we got the real chew. Real chew, real chew, the chew uki. My name is Chew Her, I'm 46. And I'm a four stripe blue belt. <laughs> um, my motivation is to uh, to get better, of course, right? Um, uh, I'm uh, I work in the office uh, eight plus hours a day. Uh, I sit down all day, so I need to get up. I need to move. Uh, I need to uh, see my friends and roll with them, and um, hopefully help them out and uh, help them get better. And if they help me get better. But yeah, that's the motivation. So me and two are about to roll. I'm gonna play on bottom this time. So shake hands. And I'm gonna play some reverse de la Hiva and notice that I'm using my left leg to kind of shield. And I'm switching between that knee shield and like a lasso just to kind of maintain the distance. I'm also using my frames. That's something that I want you guys to focus on when you're playing your guards. It doesn't matter which guard you're playing. Continue, continue to use your hands to frame and control the distance. See, I throw that lasso up and choose doing a good job of controlling my legs. So I'm having to fight back and pummel playing reverse to Lahiva on the other side on my left leg and so I'm still framing using that knee shield and I'm trying to use that right leg as a hook which is kind of hard to see and then I had to invert to kind of reset and then uh, from here Chu let me grab that leg and I'm gonna look for that knee control see how I control the knee and normally I would go for the knee bar but I think I switched to the heel hook and I'm also using my other arm to keep choose like kind of isolated so i can look get that hill right there you guys see and then eventually i'm posting on my head and then going for that inside hill hook yeah have a, come in um have a goal um you know why are you taking jujitsu uh you know like what are your goals uh in jujitsu uh you know talk to the black belts right ask for advice uh talk to uh, other folks you know that you see that your size uh, your skill level and ask them how they progressed uh, when they started as well. So uh, stay motivated, ask a lot of questions, keep showing up. Keep showing up is the, the main thing uh, to get better. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of people online, they're like, you know, I tried my first class, it was hard, I don't know if I could do this. Like, what, what do you think about those guys or what would you say to those guys? You know, uh, life is hard, you know what I mean? That, uh, 
I think life is harder, but jujitsu, yeah, it's hard, but it's, it's a challenge, right? Um, you know, it's not gonna, things aren't gonna get handed to you on a plate. You have to go for it, right? Um, um, you know, something to strive for. Uh, it is, it is a hard sport, and uh, a hard uh, martial art. Um, <laughs> Juice said, suck it up. Yeah, Juice. Really like suck it up. Um, yeah, just suck it up. It'll make you a better person for sure. So back at it again with two. We're gonna, I'm gonna play on bottom, two plays on top. So I'm looking for a shin to shin. And then I switch to a single leg. And then from here, I could either come up or play a uh, half guard. And Chu's doing a good job of trying to bubble his leg back in. Really good, he's trying to do that. And then I'm able to switch back to my butterfly guard with the double underhooks. And a uh, pretty bad uh, pretty bad situation for Chu, but he's I'm able to get the sweep. And I'm looking for the cross Ashi, but I missed it. So I'm gonna switch to a hook with my right leg. And then it's really hard to see, but I'm gonna roll over. So it's like a really cool toe hold uh, setup that you don't really see too often. And then we're about to go at it again. Shake hands. Again, Chu plays on top. I'm playing on bottom, looking for that shin. So just stay active on bottom, you know, keep moving your legs, move your legs around, move your arms around. You can kind of see my legs are twirling around a little bit there. Chu tries to step in, but I think that was a mistake because that gave me the like backside and from here I'm looking for like a crab ride position I might come up for a single leg or leg drag and then Chu sits back and now we're gonna get into some passing shake hands again and time is up my name is Marcus Felder I'm 42 years old and I'm a purple belt well what first got me into jiu-jitsu was I was actually, a lot of people don't know this, but I've shared it with some people, is I was actually arrested for a DWI because I used to party, drink all the time from basically Monday, Tuesday. Well, Tuesday was the only day of the week I didn't drink. And, you know, it started getting out of shape and all these kind of other things. And jujitsu, the one thing with drinking is a very social thing, so you don't think about it. You know, you go out to dinner, you go out to bars, you meet people and start drinking. And then jujitsu introduced me to a way to meet people without drinking and you know I've enjoyed the community and that's what kind of keeps me back it gives me a sense of family I'm literally 14 hours away from my family a drive so they're all in New York nobody's nearby and this is kind of like my pseudo family so I come for my family to train get together and learn learn some stuff now about the role with Marcus you know purple belt so I'm starting on bottom again and just a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more movement. You know, we're warmed up. So Marcus is doing some good side to side passing. I'm looking for this key master guard. I've been working a lot on. So I have a lot of good attacks from here, namely like the false reap, which I'll try to bring that left or right leg over his, his body. Marcus, he's kind of, uh, he's a little bit farther back. I think if he had gone all the way back, it probably would have been better. So I'm looking for the false reap. You can see I'm looking for that left arm grip around his hill. And then I switch to an ankle lock grip. You know, for Marcus, I think he, well, it's kind of hard to get out of the false reap at this point. <laughs> he probably should have rolled through and then started hand fighting, but I was able to get my grip. He's doing a good job of hand fighting here, but there's only so long you, you can stay here. And then I just had the backside. He'll hook and I'm just kind of like, all right, Marcus, go tap out. So uh, bad position. You know, whenever you're doing any of these leg entanglements, make sure, you know, you use a lot of control so you don't hurt your partners. And so we just restart, get him on bottom. And Marcus, he's standing up to pass. I think he's looking for some knee cuts or something. We'll see. I'm working my De La Hiva on my left side or right side De La Hiva. And uh, just trying to off balance, maybe look for a bolo. Maybe come back, I'm looking for like the half guard. So notice I'm using my frames really well, framing off his shoulders. I'm looking for that arm, his right arm, so he can't cross face or anything. And then I just kind of reset. And now I'm looking for his arm for like a two on one. He tries to back step, but I kind of saw that coming. My alarm clock, 6.20 goes off. That's why I'm not here on time <laughs> because I hit the snooze button. Don't hit the snooze button because you'll be late to class. But yeah, the alarm is set every day. It says 6.20, time to get to jujitsu. I hit the snooze button. It goes off the second time. I get myself in the car and I head over here. Maybe a little late, but 
it depends on traffic. So I'm back on the feet, kind of scoot back in, in view of the camera. So I'm just going to work on my outside passes, moving side to side, controlling one of his legs. Marcus is doing a good job of retaining his guard. Now looking for the outside passing, maybe looking to underhook his leg. Nice. I go to the other side. And now like into like a Toriando leg drag situation. And then some leg pummeling. I think I was looking for the Philly, uh, the Philly, uh, like heel hook kind of entry, but I messed it up <laughs> and just put myself in the Ashi. Marcus doing a good job attacking my legs. I'm just trying to work my defense. Just not letting him get that heel pummeling. See how I'll use that left leg to, to uh, kind of protect my inside leg while Marcus is trying to protect his legs. And so we're pretty much in a stalemate here. You know, whoever has better positioning is going to get get into the movement. And I'm looking to uh, start attacking his heel. He's doing some good hand fighting here. Now I'm looking to sit up in the 50-50. My arms trapped a little bit there. And uh, we're just playing around with the feet. You know, I can go for ankle lock. Marcus does a good job of extending his leg. And I'm switching back to his heel. So yeah, hand fight here, guys. Hand fight, slip your heel, uh, and always tap out when you know you feel like you're trapped. And just keep going, man. Keep going. Restart. I'm looking for the single leg. I can either sit up or I can stay in the half guard. Maybe looking for a dog fight. There we go. So Marcus could back step here. That would put me in danger. Or I could come up, which I that's what I do. And I think I look for a limp arm. Boom. And then come on top. Marcus has started framing. Maybe looking for the butterfly sweep. We were drilling earlier. And I just try to get out of there <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> I've tried to get out of there. I mean, really just soak it up little by little. I mean, and that's definitely one of the things. Don't worry about getting submissions or doing all the fancy stuff, but learn really the fundamentals, the basics, because those are still things that I still use today. I've been training for eight years and most of the fundamentals are the things that I still go back to, um, you know, keeping a good base, keeping your posture. And those are things that you can always practice at any level. And then always try what you learned in class that day. And even though everybody learned it that day, just try it and see where you failed. So about the role of cousin Tony, this time he's gonna play on bottom and you're gonna see a little bit of my passing, just a little bit. So. I'm always watching for that shin. You see Cousin Tony's shin kind of sneaking in. That right leg was sneaking in. And I'm just gonna move side to side, you know, not gonna commit too much. Side to side movement as soon as I feel one of the shins coming in. Uh, but Cousin Tony does a good job of getting into his Ashi in a little bit. But I'm hand fighting, watching legs. You know, you gotta multitask when you're fighting black belts. So he goes for the shin on shin, kicks under. But I'm able to kind of snake my little leg out of there. That was good. It looked pretty good. good. I'm Anthony Bedine or Tony Bedine or Cousin Tony. Um, 42 years old, third degree black belt. I mean, it's kind of just been routine and uh, part of my life for so long that if I don't do it, I just don't feel right. Um, also, it's, uh, you know, people talk about this all the time, like for veterans, I'm a veteran. Uh, I was a fireman. Just you do a lot of trauma and this really, really helps me with that. So if I miss too many days and I start like, my mind starts going nuts and I have to be on the mat. So that's kind of my motivation. And then obviously I'm an instructor, so being here for my students as well. So I'm rolling with Cousin Tony. I'm playing on top this time. And he's, uh, <clears throat> he's doing a good job of using like that Gordon Ryan foot sweep from on bottom. And so I'm kind of watching out for that. Every time I cross step, he was looking for that. So I was kind of wary of that, trying to create some openings by going to the other side. You know, we're hand fighting, we're watching the feet. So when you're rolling with black belts, it's like, you gotta watch out for everything. So trying to force the headquarters, but Tony's got a good De La Hiva hook in and he's able to uh, underhook my leg for underhook De La Hiva. Maybe try to get into that Ashi or butterfly. And then I'm kind of trying to hand fight and pull my leg out. <laughs> Cause I have short legs, so I can pull them out. And then I'm kind of sitting back. Cousin Tony goes on top. Here, I'm, I'm trying to do like a deep, Deep De La Hiva X, but you know, it's kind of hard to do that in Ogi. 
So Tony's looking for his headquarters pass. You can see he's digging that underhook with his right arm. And I'm kind of bumping him. And then I let go to invert. And then, uh, you know, here a lot of leg pummeling. We're both looking for our different entries <clears throat> while defending at the same time. So that can be, it can be tough to get stuff on higher level guys. I think for me, it's been more about patience. And uh, that's kind of why you see like someone like Gordon Ryan might opt for like a no time limit match because the longer the match goes, the more opportunities you're gonna have to get a submission, especially when both guys are really good. So normally you're not gonna get a submission really early on unless there's a big difference in skill. So from here, you know, I was looking for uh, maybe a little bit of false reap. And I'm also looking my, for my reverse de la Hiva. Again, I invert. Tony does a good job of escaping. And then uh, we're just both looking for different entries. You're both looking for the legs. Yeah, my advice is, um, I mean, if you want to get good, you, you got to stay on the mats. Don't don't take days off. Um, if you're tired, come to the gym. Try to figure out how to train tired. Uh, don't focus on the rank. When you start focusing on your belts and your ranks, then you start getting down. Just just focus on the journey, as corny as that sounds. Focus on the journey and just getting better. Because whether you're ranked, if you get ranked up or not, you're still improving every time you're on the on the mat. So I think that's what gets people to uh, kind of lose hope and quit because it's a tough martial art. It takes a long time. Tony trying to force a knee cut, force the half guard. And I think he actually did a good job here. You see he's framing my shoulders, trying to leg pummel. And I think I was looking for half guard. I don't know if I have his leg trapped or not, but he does a good job of trapping my top leg, my left leg. And now he's got both the head and arm controlled. And then I'm just kind of stuck here. I think I just like was going to take my time and maybe look for a deep half guard, so, you know, slow and steady. <laughs> I'm keeping my legs crossed and that's helping me to turn my hips over into that deep half guard position. And then I look for the waiter sweep situation right there. But Tony does a good job of sitting back. And yeah, not much you can do, man. You know, when your partner knows what you're doing, you know what they're doing. You just got to take your time, create little openings. So I'm using my guard retention here. Tony tries to pass the other side and he comes back. Luckily, I was able to underhook. And I think I was able to come up for this half guard sweep where you tap the legs. Nice. And back in the headquarters. But Tony, he's got a good De La Hiva. You see he's controlling my leg with his right, his left arm. He's got a good hook on the on the far side, and then I think that was time. My name is Jeffrey Cummings. I'm a black belt, 34 years old. If I, if I gotta be honest, I think I always had this thing where I just didn't want to be kind of the status quo or be like a normal kind of drone type of person. No disrespect to anyone that is living that life, but I, I just I always I don't know. I always like had this the standard where I wanted to always take care of myself and I feel like this is like a really good vehicle for that like a really good way to push you to stay honest with yourself you know eat right treat your body right it's a lot of it's a good way to stay accountable in your life so I think so that's you say? the number one reason why I still train is it keeps me accountable so now we got Jeff and me we're gonna do a light roll just to get started nice and easy <laughs> That's what we always say. So I'm playing a little bit of butterfly, looking for my false reap. And Jeff sees probably looking for, um, he's gonna work his defense now. He's gonna be escaping that cross Ashi. So you see how he's got his left leg on my thigh. So that's a really good way to kind of get out of these positions. Make sure you turn into your partner or away from your partner, escaping your knee. So he's able to get like this deep De La Hiva hook on me, probably looking to bolo. I'm looking to attack his far side leg with the outside reap. Jeff comes up top. He's really good at killing these positions, like this single leg X Ashi position. And so you see how he's stacking me. He's looking for my hip, probably trying to invert or roll. There he goes. I'm looking for his hill, but you know, I don't have a lot of good connection here. And now he's looking for that crab ride, which can be kind of tough to do in Ogi, but it's, it's doable. It's just your mechanics need to be really tight. I'm looking to pummel, so I'm bringing my left leg, trying to get it on like his body, his upper body, so I can push away, create some space. And um, 
At the same time, I'm also looking for attacks. If, you know, Jeff starts slipping on me, I'll try to grab something. You see he's escaping that leg. And so we're just doing a lot of leg pummeling just to prepare ourselves for dealing with Nogi grapplers. Now we're looking at the 50-50 outside reap. Jeff's doing a good job of controlling my far side leg, my left leg, and just keeping his knee in a safe position. And you, get, you can't see, but that, now you can see it, but his right leg is inside. So he's using that to create space. So even if I did have his knee controlled, he's using that leg to create, create space. Maybe looking for a crab ride or just re-pummel and look for his own attacks. And we're just looking at different options, you know, not going too hard, too crazy, just seeing what's available. You know, worst case, you get in a bad position, you try to escape that bad position. And um, this is a good way to develop your attacks. Just always looking for new, new positions, new situations, new submissions. So I'm looking for this outside reap, uh, but Jeff's, he's good at, you know, getting out of that position. And uh, we're both just looking for attacks, so we're not really playing on top too much. Jeff's got the deep half guard and then um, like a waiter position. I'm looking to see if I can reverse it or if I can grab something. Or how can I deconstruct this position? So I'm like, oh, can I grab this grip? Can I push on the arm? Can I grab this? So we're just both examining what's going on. I can see that Jeff's looking for my back, so I just I put myself back on the floor to make it harder. Now looking for this Dima lock. Jeff's looking for this K guard entry. I'm looking for ankle lock. So a lot of different situations happening just to see and test what, what's possible. You know, when you're going really hard, you won't have time to test and experiment. So you gotta do that at a lower, lower pace. I'm looking to see if I can trap his leg. So I back step into the, uh, into the 411. So I'm looking for that hill, but Jeff's, he's got it posted on the floor really well. Now I'm looking for like this Texas, uh, I forget what it's called, <laughs> but Jeff's able to get out of there. Now he's looking for his on attack. I'm trying to escape by rolling. As I roll out, guys, I pull my knee, my knee down toward the floor. So now I'm in this key master guard position. You know, I can look for false reap. I can look for this weird ankle lock thing I'm doing. And Jeff's pretty confident. You know, if he were to push that right leg down, I think he could uh, escape pretty fast. I look for the false reap. Jeff rolls out. And then uh, we're just back and forth, man. Back and forth. Again, keeping it playful. Jeff's working on his outside passing now. Maybe foot stomp. And I'm, I'm moving my feet, man. I'm not going to sit there and let him trap my legs easy. I go to invert, invert, and just keep leg pummeling, moving my legs, never staying like a, still to where I'm an easy target. So now Jeff's looking for the headquarters. I'm looking for a deep half guard. I try to pummel, maybe to get the single leg X guard. And I know Jeff's looking for a re-roll here over his shoulder to get into a crab ride. And then I think that's time. I mean, you can't come in here and like live a wild life and be able to train consistently, especially at 34 years old. Like your diet has to be on point. You know, you got to stay hydrated. You know, you got to recover your body. Um, it keeps you honest, man. There is no BSing in Jiu Jitsu. I mean, um, I come from wrestling and, you know, did it when I was younger. Uh, and I have a friend who always joke about how jujitsu is where wrestlers go to die. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like my way of being able to still wrestle. But, you know, I'm too old for wrestling, but I got jujitsu. So that's something else I kind of think about, too. And uh, any advice to new people starting out that maybe need some motivation or they don't know how to get started? Like, what would you, you know, tell them? Man. Uh, it might be hard in the beginning. It might just be hard to start. I know for a lot of people, it's they think you're crazy because you are. <laughs> but why, why um, do they think that you're crazy? Man, they think you're crazy because you're voluntarily putting yourself through a lot of pain and a lot of uh, emo like you're getting your ass whooped physically and emotionally in a lot of cases. Like, I think the biggest thing 
for sure it's like you're gonna have some physical aches but I really believe that a lot of people are it's hard for them to just put their ego leave their ego at the door so I would say just get over your ego you're gonna wish that you did it everyone that I know that started it late wishes that they did it everyone that I know that doesn't do it wish they tried it and started it and there definitely is it's not easy but you're gonna feel proud of yourself for it. If you just make the move, if you try it, do it, stick with it, you're gonna feel good about yourself. So last round with Jeff, we decided to do some stand up just to mix it up a little bit. I haven't done any stand up in a while, so I'm rusty. So it's always good to, you know, push your comfort zone. So Jeff's doing a good job moving in and out, staying heavy on the head circling I'm my my footwork's looking bad so any wrestling coaches out there looking at me I'm sorry so Jeff here he's over he switches to the Kimura so I went to shoot and he, he grabs that Kimura so I'm just looking to escape without giving up my back or giving up my arm so I'm trying to get parallel with Jeff's body and then I'm gonna try to slip my elbow which isn't always easy you know sometimes you're fighting the juice jitsu guys it's tough so I'm just staying patient not doing any crazy movements get my arm out and back out so we just keep going trying to faint, faint a little bit but uh footwork's not looking too good try to try to collar tie go into the two-on-one and then jeff hits this crazy spin out of the two-on-one russian but i was able to reverse it just luckily i got like a kimura on jeff and i was able to escape but uh it doesn't always happen that way so I need to work on my footwork a little bit more, head movement, obviously. Just my, how I engage with the collar tie. So Jeff's doing a good job staying heavy on my head. I'm switching back to that Russian tie, two on one. And I'm just looking for some foot sweeps. It's a little bit tough because I'm shorter. So that leg don't go as far as I want it to go. Uh, but then Jeff tried to sit, sit through and I was able to stay on top. And now I'm just playing on top for a little bit. Um, try to into a leg drag maybe do some outside passing jeff tried for the uh, the uh false reap but i was able to get into like a headquarters position position or i think they call this the dm in 10 planet terminology and uh just controlling jeff's elbow trying to escape my heel over the top and i'm trying to set up a long step there but uh it's hard to control a nogi and a little snap down just for just for the heck of it. Whew, yeah, I gotta work on my stand-up, guys. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit more hand fighting, controlling the head, head movement, footwork. Footwork needs to be always be worked on. And I'm I'm liking this two on one, one Russian, but uh wasn't working too well today. And I'm just moving, trying to move out the way. So there we go, Jeff staying heavy on the head, going high and going up low. A little bit of hand fighting. I'm bouncing a little bit too much, so I need to work on that. So now I'm kind of getting a little bit back used to it. You know, I'm protecting my lead leg. Jeff's trying to snap down, snap down. I'm still trying my Russian tie. Maybe looking for something else from there. And I'm just moving, 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 moving. Um, so, you know, whenever you're doing any takedowns, wrestling style, move. Jeff, he's able to get a good single leg. And I'm hopping, guys. I'm hopping. And trying to hand fight, trying to break the grips off my leg. Pull on his elbows while trying to be heavy on my heel and get it, kick it down straight down the middle. So I'm able to escape. And we just keep going, you know. That's the hard part about wrestling. Any stand up, it's just very cardio, <clears throat> very cardio based. So you got to move, stay active, stay attacking. Just staying heavy on my head. I'm just trying to circle out and I'm using my feints, faint, faint, Ooh, low single. Didn't work, but uh, so even if you miss something, just try to chain it together. You see my hands going to my legs. I'm getting tired. <laughs> and I think Jeff's trying to do like a throw by on me which is uh, a bad position for me, and I had to circle out just at the last minute to save myself and change my level. So yeah, if you guys want a good workout, try some, uh, <laughs> some stand-up. 
And then, uh, you know, I'm just sticking with this two-on-one Russian, but it wasn't working that day. Maybe, maybe next time. And we just move in. I think I just threw a shot out there just for the heck of it. Another shot. I just got lucky with a blast double there. And then um, just trying to stay out of trouble. Jeff's looking for a false reap on me, and I just sit back. Just trying to get out of there. I was <laughs> just trying to get out of there. And I think that was time. I'm telling you, Evo, I think a lot of people that think that way, it's like they're comparing themselves to other people. And you need to compare yourself to yourself. Um, I think that's something that you really need to focus on is uh, that kind of that me versus me mentality. And not really thinking about anyone else outside of yourself anything outside of yourself just think about what you can do to get better and I guarantee that you know you change your mindset you will not feel that way as much at least oh thank you brother oh